a braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. These marks have been left by a rope or a breaded cloth. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. This hut is locked. This hut is locked. This hut is locked. Dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. This hut is locked. The number is upside down. This is definitely at number six. Dual locking pad. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. 
purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motive for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called... Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat at the cafe slightly further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have a address? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. With all these tourists, these shops must be thriving. Hastings appears to be ill at ease. He appeared to be relatively indifferent to Mrs. Asher's murder, but a young woman's murder seems to be troubling him greatly. Hastings appears to be I feel... Cert. Cert. I fear that this case is far from being solved. Come on, Poirot. You'll find the killer. Cert. But how many times will he kill before I do? In a minute, gentlemen. A delightful cafe. So, this is where Betty worked. Yes, indeed. Let us find someone to talk to. What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. Hastings would probably... This is a well-laid table. Nothing is out of place and, above all, no creases.
Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? I should consult the register first. I should consult the register first. I should consult the I should consult Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? This page won't help me. Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover, maybe the murderer. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. No, something's not right. Betty was alone at just one of these two times. Most probably a single man, a whiskey. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. No, something's not right. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover. Maybe the murderer? No, something's not right. Betty was alone at just one of these two times. Most probably a single man. This bill. No, 
Something's not right. Betty was alone at... Maybe I should consult... Most probably a single... This bill... Most probably a family. Betty served a family and a man on his own. A whiskey drinker. Maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found dead on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. What can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee, her private life was none of my business. You did know at least that she had a young man. Indeed. Do you think he could have harmed her? I repeat, I wasn't on close terms with Betty, and even less so with her fiancé. How do you expect me to answer such a question? Now, please excuse me, I have work to do. The customer who ordered a whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Stings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. Miss Marion is not the sort of witness that my friend enjoys questioning. How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I know you. You're that detective we hear all about. I do not know if that is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. You are Betty's sister, I believe? Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? 
Please do. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be up to speaking to you later. Do not worry. We will not bother them. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair. The very day it happened. She was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor Mummy. It would not be polite to visit the house without being invited to do so. This gramophone is magnificent. It is a one-off, without a doubt. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority in their budget. They're all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. Hastings always pays more attention when young women are being questioned. What is she feeling at the moment? Mr. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. Your sister had a fiancé, I believe? Yes, he's called Donald Fraser. A very nice man. Do you know where we might find him? He works at the estate agent's Court and Brunskill. Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. But of course. Betty's room is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. This young woman is far too clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? I did not say anything of the sort. But young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. I see. She may have had her sights on the inheritance. Or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser. We have to study all scenarios, even the most unlikely. 
But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. While I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the Ginger Cats. I would like to talk with him before the chief inspector finds him. Family photos and files. Looking at all the clothes she took out, Betty must have had a problem deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date? A box of new stockings. It looks like Betty has a very busy life. Betty liked luxury and going out. And being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. It looks like Betty was also a music lover, the same as her family. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Something on this clock bothers me. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. This metal disc is stuck. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it's a... The cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. Cogs are blocked by this wood. The cogs are blocked. By Cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't.
This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. The cogs are blocked by these wooden... The cogs are blocked by... I definitely need an object to make these cogs turn. This wooden panel is blocked. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. This decoration appears to be... Could the screw be slightly loose? This wooden panel is blocked. This decoration appears to be... F this decoration appears... This decoration appears to be firmly... F This decoration appears to be... This leg is not well attached. 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 This wooden panel is blocked. This decoration appears strange. A sheet of this wooden panel is blocked. I can't hold. Strange. A sheet of paper is blocked in the clock. Hmm. Could the screw be slightly loose? Good. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. This wooden panel is blocked. Look, a key. This could be useful. I definitely No, nah, the key does not fit this cog. 
Na, de kéde. I definitely need an. Na, the key doesn't. I definitely need an object. Ah, something clicked on the front of the clock. A new lock has appeared. What does it open? This could be useful. Betty, I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company, and I hope that we will see each other again very soon. D. My dearest Betty, I know that your art is already spoken for, but you are the most beautiful dancer I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, and I am impatient to see you again. Adrian. I've finished with this subject. Medicine to prevent voice loss. Did Betty have problems with her voice? I've finished with this subject. A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded a demo. I'd be interested to hear it. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Looks like something goes in here. That doesn't work. I cannot open it. It looks like... I cannot open it. It looks like the mechanism is blocking it. So, what is this mechanism? I need a clue to help me make it work. It looks like something goes in here. That 
doesn't work. Let us see. What is this cupboard hiding? This looks like solfege. There is probably a link with what I saw in the drawer. This looks like solfege. There is probably a link with what I saw in the drawer. Is bound to be a clue somewhere. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. I heard the sound of a mechanism being triggered. Just have to put the record on the gramophone and start it. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Doesn't work. I must. That doesn't work. Sorry, Betty, but it's not wise. The doctor said you should rest your voice. You're such a killjoy sometimes. Betty was such a good singer. It's true. Did she have any problem with her throat? Yes, 
She had to be careful with her voice. Of course she didn't follow the doctor's advice. If Don didn't insist, she... Well, it's too late for all that now.